uh, we are in Qatar, the small country with a big personality. And today we're going to be eating at Evergreen Organic, the only 100% vegan spot in Qatar. So we're about to go in to talk with Chef Matt, who is going to tell us more about veganism here in Doha. Come along. Hi, I'm Matt Downs, the executive chef at Evergreen Organics, Qatar's first and only vegan restaurant where we focus on plant-based food, sustainability, and bringing healthy, nutritious meals to the general community here in Doha. in the culinary world begins uh, as a kid, I guess. I used to follow my mother around in the kitchen, so we were always baking uh, together. And then when I went off to college, uh, unfortunately the food there was not so good. Um, and uh, I ended up losing lots of weight. Uh, I went vegetarian when I was 20. And then shortly thereafter, the, after that, when I moved off campus, had a kitchen of my own. I started uh, experimenting a lot in the kitchen and so took, uh, took my food into my own hands. From there, I was just in bars and restaurants uh, pretty much ever since. Uh, and then I was in Peru uh, almost two years ago and I uh, got an email and, uh, about the first vegan restaurant opening up in Doha, so in all of Qatar actually. Uh, which was very interesting and so here I am now today. How was the response from the public? Uh, the first weekend uh, it was crazy <laughs> and it's been going great ever since. But um, you know it's the there have been challenges here in in Doha I mean we we live in a desert uh, the summer months, June, July, August, even going into September, not very hospitable for growing things. Um, there's some, there's some hot houses here, um, some hydroponic farms that, that grow tomatoes and cucumbers uh, throughout the summer. And, and originally, when the blockade started, uh, we had a few challenges. Um, we were having not so many because a lot of our um, the produce and items that don't come from Qatar, um, because we're dealing in organics, um, our supply chain was pretty well set. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of our goods come by air, um, so in that sense, some of it was most of it wasn't affected. We did have a few shortages for a while. Things like our coconuts, uh, because previously things were coming through the ports in Dubai and then they would make their way to Doha uh, or they'd come through Saudi. Um, so now, um, but now Qatar has really, they're really um, pushing for self sufficiency. Um, you know, the, the port has opened up here, um, so there's a lot of. There are a lot of goods that are coming through the port. They're flying direct. Um, so originally we had a few challenges. Um, and I think the everyone here, um, not just at Evergreen, but around the country, it was very understanding. Um, you know, you walk into a restaurant and there's no, you know, there's there, there's no spinach on, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a spinach, you know salad on the menu and there's no spinach so how do you make a spinach salad without spinach and so I think people are very understanding but now things have really um, evened out and, and you know it's it's almost as if uh, there is no blockade uh, at least from our from our standpoint. Speaking of that how do you come up with food items like how do you come up with your choices from the menu is it just you being creative or trying things out? Sure, sure. It's uh, I mean it's a whole host of things. It's uh, it's being creative. We have a, a team here. I have two sous chefs, so we talk a lot about uh, food. Uh, we 
You know, for me, I'm so used to following the seasons. Um, the seasons here are a little bit different. It's sort of like winter and summer. True. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and nothing in between, uh, kind of overnight it, uh, it goes yes. from you know, eight, 18 degrees to 40 degrees, yes. um, unexpectedly, so Celsius, so, yeah. Celsius, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like it's four degrees. Right, so um, you know, it, I, in the back of my head, I'm, I sort of, I'm still attuned to North American seasons and you know, where we're trying to not only introduce a creative aspect, but also a healthy aspect as well. So we might come up with new juices or elixirs, um, trying to add things, add superfoods to people's uh, diet, whether that's in a new breakfast item or an elixir or a dessert, things like that. You spoke about juices. Can we check out those juices? Absolutely. about this pink one with the, the seeds in the, in the bottom of it? Sure, so you've got our Chia Rose Elixir. Um, it's rose water, water, a little pomegranate, and uh, some lemon juice and some chia seeds. And this um, really good chia seeds, really good omega-3s, um, also protein. So, you know, we're finding good, great ways to pack the protein in, in unusual spots. Can you tell me a little bit more about the juice aspect? Because a lot of people, like I've, I've heard people that juice, right? and the other people say it's not healthy because you're basically squeezing out the sugars right. of the plant or the fruit and you're not getting the most nutritious part. Right. Well, I mean, you know, certainly you want to get fiber. Um, you know, I, I think that it's a great supplement. You know, supplementing your diet with juice is really great because you're getting the concentrated min minerals. You're not getting the fiber, so you know I, I definitely think that living on juices alone, it's not the way that I would go. Okay. Uh, but it definitely has some benefits. Uh, you know, you're concentrating in, in this this jar here. You're getting about a ki roughly a kilo worth of vegetables. Uh, and that's enough for what? <laughs> I mean, I'll down that in one sitting, so... And but that's not enough of greens for the day, of course. Well, that's, I would say that's enough greens for the day, but uh -huh. it, it won't stop me from eating kale salad as well. So, um, like I said, I think it's a good supplement. Yes, uh, juice-wise, I, I mean, I would, I would differentiate between something like the green juices and the beet juice and, like, orange juice. Uh, as much as I love fresh-squeezed orange juice, it's something that I would have on, on rare occasions, maybe on vacation or something. I don't drink orange juice on a, on a daily basis because, I mean, drinking this much orange juice is just pure sugar. sugar. Right. So yes, there's going to be some sugar um, in some of these juices, but we, you know, we overload with uh, the vegetables and, okay. and, not, and kind of naturally sweeten where we need to with things like Granny Smith apple. Uh, but then we also have our elixirs. Uh, these are new. These are new drinks uh, for us. We want we uh, you know for those that wanted a healthy drink, something hydrating that uh, maybe wasn't as dense as uh, dense as uh, the vegetables. Uh, we decided to come out with a line of elixirs, and then spirulina elixir, um, anti-inflammatory. Um, and kind of cell repair. Good after workout. Um, good after a workout. Also, spirulina has a lot of protein. Um, high, high, super dense protein. Uh, I mean, you're not going to eat a pound of spirulina in a sitting, but uh, it but does. But you can drink it. But you can drink it. But uh, I mean, it does have more protein per pound than beef does. So. Uh, say that again. More protein <laughs> per pound than beef. So you can get right. your protein you from can. being a vegan. You can. Absolutely. As you a lot get, of people don't think you get, that. You get protein everywhere. Broccoli and lentils and, and quinoa and sweet potatoes. I mean, they all have protein in one form or another. Okay. So yeah, we can definitely go to the kitchen. <laughs> Let's, Let's go see where the magic happens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you.
for us today? So uh, we've got a couple things, uh, a few small bites, our um, kale stem mushroom dumplings. So as I was talking about before, we really try and use as much as we can of the whole plant. So we use a lot of kale here. We've got a great kale salad. What do you do with the stem? So what we've done is we've got a little bit of it's uh, mushrooms and kale stems and uh, we flavor it with a uh, homemade Chinese five spice. Okay. Um, so it's kind of Asian kind of, uh, Chinese flavored dumpling. Uh, so it looks like this. It's a gluten-free wrapper. It's uh, cauliflower and flaxseed, um, a little oat flour, a little bit of coconut sugar. Uh, we, we take that, um, wrap our dumpling filling in it, and then we're gonna go and go to the stove and get that going. And that's the dumplings. That's the dumplings. From so, kale stems. From kale stems, <laughs> My, yes. <laughs> nice and nutritious, <laughs> nice and nutritious. We serve uh, so it's hijiki, arugula, and a ginger mustard dressing that we, it's a creamy, it's a creamy uh, ginger mustard dressing. We use sunflower seeds. Okay. Uh, so we soak the sunflower seeds and that instead of using something like yogurt or milk, you get that creamy uh, texture from the sunflower seeds. And that goes in the dumpling or on top? That is going to, we're going to serve up a little salad of arugula hijiki with the, the with dressing the and then top of a little bit of radish. The dumplings we're going to, we're going to cook in the oven, serve that up all together and top it with a little bit of orange sambal. Okay. And then we've also got our uh, very popular beetroot ravioli. It's beet, it's uh, <laughs> very thinly sliced, slices of beet. Can we see one? Absolutely. So it looks like this. Check it out. These ones are already prepared, but... How do you get a slice so thin? So we use a mandolin um, and you just shave it really close and, we, and then we marinate it with a little olive oil and salt and stuff it with our cashew cheese. And you can already see the beet is starting to bleed into the cheese. So the cashew cheese is very easy. It's cashews that we soak overnight. Uh, we blend that with a little bit of water, add probiotics to it, which you can get at uh, your local health food store. So we stuff the ravioli with that and we're going to top it with some uh, pistachio pesto, some dehydrated mushrooms. Brittany, you were asking about the, yes, the dehydrator. The dehydrator. Um, so many times so, I look at vegan recipes and it's always asking for a dehydrator. And then right. I see this and I'm like, oh, okay. It's really great. We were talking about raw food and so this uh, allows us to essentially cook without cooking. Uh, so, you know, we've got these mushrooms here that, you know, very well could have been roasted. Well, what we've done, we've mixed it with olive oil, tamari, uh, thyme, and garlic. And we put it into the dehydrator um, for three, four, five hours. Um, it's, uh, we have it set 110 degrees. And, uh, and then also we're going to serve up our burger. A burger, uh, a vegan burger. burger. Vegan burger. Okay. And uh, so it's full of grains rice and um, also lentils, chickpeas. What's really cool about our burger is that we take the pulp from one of our juices, the so Be Grounded, our beet juice. We take the pulp from that and we add that into the burger. So it gives it a little bit of a, a reddish hue. A meaty. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's like a nice meaty texture. And, uh, but the great thing about that, we've been talking about sustainability. So we are able to try, rather than put toss all of the, toss all of that, um, we put it back into our burger. So you still get the fiber if you have the juice and you have the burger. Exactly. So, you know, pair the two up and then you've got the complete uh, vegetable. I've had your burgers before, but one of the things I noticed was the ketchup or the mm -hmm. dressing that you put on it. Was, yes. That's so made that, in-house too. That is made in-house. So the ketchup uh, that we serve with our sweet potato fries is uh, tomatoless ketchup. It's beets, it's goji berries. Uh, lots of different spices. Um, <laughs> so it's no tomato no at tomato, all? No tomato. No tomato at all. Wow. That's a surprise. Yeah, yes, I, so. I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's get cooking. Let's get okay. cooking. 
So what's the first thing we're going to do? So first thing that we are going to do, we're going to cook up these beautiful dumplings. So those so. are pan fried? So, so we're going to start it on top of the stove um, and then move it into the oven. Okay. And we're just going to throw those in the oven. So it's putting them on top just to get them coated or get them a little... Yeah, bit. just get the, the oil warmed and then get the... So we're kind of searing them on the bottom. And how long are you going to put them in the oven? They'll be in the oven. We've got it at uh, 230 degrees. Uh, it's like 450 at home. Oh, okay. I'd probably use it. You could use a, a lower temperature at home, um, but we're constantly opening and closing, so we have to keep it pretty high. It'll okay. be in there about four minutes at home, probably six to eight minutes. And this is going to be served on the side of the dumplings or underneath uh, the dumplings? The dumplings are going to be going to be served around it. And what's this again? So this is the hijiki seaweed. Okay. Very, very, very good for you. So and you can see we've got a nice crisp on the bottom. What are so the dumplings? The dumplings are made from cauliflower, flaxseed, um, oat flour, a little bit of coconut sugar, and they're gluten free. What is this topping? So this is our orange sambal. It's oranges and orange juice and chilies and ginger, garlic, tamari. That's so basically good. yummy deliciousness. Yeah, all yeah. Right we just together. cook that down to okay. yummy and delicious. So. Oh wow, Ooh, that looks that great. Is, yeah, we're gonna are you get hitting to that. this right now? <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. And this is all vegan. Good. And this is all vegan. Mm -hmm. So all these and people who think that it's okay, Look at those colors. <laughs> and not green. just the salad. Exactly. <laughs> We've got salad, but more. We eat more than exactly. salad. Yes. So the ravioli is uh, over the course of our year and a half or so that we've been open, almost a year and a half. This has been by and far the most consistently popular. We do events now. We're doing the uh, coffee, tea, and chocolate festival. Oh, you guys are there? We're there, and people are like, oh, we, you know, it's, it's, it, it's literally, most people are just doing coffee, coffee and tea. That's coffee, what I thought. chocolate and tea. And so that's what we're doing. You know, we've got a few things that aren't, that don't have chocolate in them so or coffee. So there's food there too. There's food, um, but we... Oh, why haven't we been there yet? Because we thought it wasn't food. We thought it was just <laughs> coffee and tea. Yes. Now we're going. <laughs> okay, but I don't like beets. I actually hate beets. So how do you get your beets to not taste like dirt? Dirt. <laughs> dirt. Yeah, a little, you know, a little alchemy, a little magic. Um, I don't know, smoke and mirrors, I guess. <laughs> Maybe. But we just, all we do with this, we, um, like I said, we, we shave them thin. Olive oil, salt, we let them marinate. Uh, and then we stuffed them with cashew cheese. The first time I came here, the first time I ever came to Evergreen, um, one of the ladies said, I said, what do you suggest? She said, get the beet ravioli. It was with you? Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no way, I'm not eating any beets. No way, I do not and like I said, that you will never get any beets. Just try beets. it, try it. Oh, we were together. Yeah, it was a hate And the lady beets. was like, just try it. You'll like it. It was like, uh, okay, I'm going to try it. But if I don't like it, I'm going to speak yeah. to you. I told you. And the first bite, we looked at each other and we were like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, this is great. Because you were like, we'll just share one. I was like, no, you're going to have to <laughs> buy your own because yeah. you're going to like it. It was amazing. And so then we just. Nice and simple, we just top it with a little bit. Where's uh, your plate? Aruga, aruga. Where's, where's your plate? You mean that's your? No, no, I'm gonna eat this, what are you gonna eat? <laughs> what you're not gonna do is <laughs> eat all of it. <laughs> and what is this, this is the salt? So just a little bit of salt. Sea salt. A little sea salt. Okay. And some olive oil. Okay, we're done now, we can just cut. <laughs> Nope. And cut here and then uh, just eat that. <laughs> uh, amazing. Gorgeous. All right. And then our final dish of the day is our burger. So we talked a little bit about the burger, what's in it, um, oats and rice and lentils, chickpeas, the pulp from our bee grounded juice. Um, lots of herbs and spices. Um, we form that and then we bake that off. And these are our sweet potato fries. 
our magic spice, so it's a... Uh, secret. Secret, <laughs> secret magic. But uh, there's some garlic powder and some thyme and paprika in there. We're just gonna warm that in the oven. Okay. We've got our burger. See, and it's thick and the consistency, it holds well together. It didn't even yep. break apart. Yeah. Exactly, so nice and firm. And then I'm going to top it with the mushrooms. What did you call that mushroom? Mushroom duxel. <laughs> duxel. <laughs> so, <laughs> normally, normally we you'd have a uh, traditional, have a little white wine. Can and I taste a little about, about yeah, that? Yeah, ab absolutely. There you go. Normally you'd have a little white wine in there. It's white wine. Uh, but being, <laughs> being, here, being here. here in Qatar. <laughs> not our current uh, environment. Boom. There we go. What kind of lettuce do you use? It's a, it's a red leaf lettuce, Lola Rosa. Okay. Yeah. Did you tell us about the dressing? That's a mayo. What so that of? is a uh, cashew cheese based uh, sauce. It's cashew cheese and tomato juice and cucumbers and nutritional yeast. Check it out. <laughs> no tomato ketchup. No. Chef, I didn't get a taste. You don't need to taste everything. <laughs> We're gonna go outside and taste. <laughs> Should, we Should we eat? Should we eat? Yes, yes, yes. Let's, 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 let's do this. Go. So, where should we begin? Wherever mm. you'd like. Where, what's? Uh, I'm pulling adventures. I'm I know, gonna try I'm, the new dish. Go okay, for it. Let's, I'm feeling let's try it out. Normal, so I'm gonna get the beets. <laughs> I'm gonna try out something new. Well, I guess I should ask you, would you like some beets? We'll after share with you. you. After you. <laughs> what we'll do you share recommend with you? <laughs> um, dumplings? Do you recommend I just I, eat I, the whole just, thing or just, cut it up? You know, go on in. Go however for it. You're, how, okay. All right. You're, Unfortunately, I can't go all in because I am brace <laughs> Oh, based. braces. Brace face. All right now. Shame but on you. it will still get eaten slowly but surely. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm trying to be cute. Nope. That's good. That's really good. Oh, I'm it's softer good. than I thought it would be. I love the sauce, too. Some bold, bold um, Chinese flavors, Sichuan flavors. Mm. Yeah. That sauce so definitely adds Chinese to it. five spice and fresh herbs and mint and cilantro in there. And the Chinese five spice is made in-house, mm -hmm. correct? We make all of our spice blends in-house. Oh, that's awesome. Our curry powders, our za'atar, um, yeah. The seaweed adds to the salad now. Now I can yeah, taste yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> You know, and, and we try to mix it up. We've got, you know, the fresh salad with the, the cooked dumplings. Um, so making sure that everyone's getting their, their greens, you know, it's... I like to try and approach the menu not just creatively, uh, but making sure that you know, throughout the menu, uh, if not on each plate, there, there's balance between raw and cooked or... The rainbow plate. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. I'm going to cut this burger because I know that... Uh, yes. I know you're both excited for it. <laughs> oh, he, he wants to get you cutting over. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> We're going to cut this burger right up. <laughs> cut it into threes. I'll do my best. I think mm. I'll, I'll go with fours. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, let you I'll let you fight over the fourth piece. Mm. Maybe we'll save it for someone. <laughs> we got someone else around to hear this. <laughs> Who might be interested? Mm. Mm. Well, while you are sitting on Those cameras that, don't work for free, do they? <laughs> I picked up one of the elixirs. The uh, aloe vera. Aloe vera. Collagen cure. Which is supposed to be anti-inflammatory. Inflammatory, mm. Skin, Sorry, glow. Sorry, but... Vitamin A, C, and this B ravioli is amazing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's so rude. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Mm. But yes, uh, the maybe collagen. We should, maybe we should rename them the, the rude ravioli. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Rude the ravioli. <laughs> I like it. All right, it's my favorite time, my favorite part of the meal. Dessert time, it is. So we have what here with us, Chef Matt? So we, this is our, um, our cheesecake. And it is made out of cashews, cashew cheese, lemon, sumac. It's um, 
a uh, very popular spice here in the Middle East. Um, kind of lemony flavor, citrusy flavor. A um, little miso and some nutritional yeast in there. Um, coconut oil. And then we top it off with some pistachios. We toss out with a secret spice blend and some agave and some pomegranate jewels. Um, better than your traditional New York style cheesecake. How about this one? We have another dish here. This is um, seasonal. This is seasonal. This okay. is our winter addiction. So we had our chocolate addiction, which is very similar. Um, it's a chocolate avocado mousse. And uh, the original was with a coconut cream. Now for the winter time, we have a spiced uh, sweet potato cream. And then we top it with sprouted um, pumpkin seeds and cacao nibs. So it's very simple, but um, really kind of decadent. Uh, the chocolate mousse is, is really, um, it's really rich, it's nice. All right. And full, full of superfoods. Let's <laughs> try it out. <laughs> have to go around the seats, break space. Mm. Mm. Yep. Look at those sweet potatoes there. That cheesecake is it's really good. Mm -hmm. I am not a chocolate fan, but I'm going to go in for, I'm going to put it on the side because I've eaten with this one already. I'm going to put it on the side. You don't want to mix the two? No, I didn't want to put my spoon back in it. Oh, I already had okay. it. I'm going to mix the two here. You've been eating behind each other this whole time. Now you want to be separating it. Well, it's not supposed to be. Oh, you can't eat the, the nuts dirt. because of your braces. Oh, your brace face. <laughs> it's actually not bad. We're going to convert <laughs> you to chocolates, are we? Um, <laughs> not quite. Not quite yet. <laughs> I'm gonna work on it, but no, it, it's actually good. And I don't particularly like sweet potato, mm -hmm. but I love chocolate, so I'm gonna try this side. And then we'll get you to mix it. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> the chocolate is delicious. It tastes like chocolate pudding. Mm -hmm. And what is avocado? Chocolate avocado. I don't even taste avocado at no. all. That really gives it the, the body and the, the creaminess and the thickness, the texture. What is the crust of the The crust chicken? is uh, nuts and dates, mostly. So you can be vegan and still enjoy dessert. Absolutely, absolutely. So you, might, you, might, you might even find it better than, uh, than your traditional desserts. I'm sorry, did the, did the cameraman say something about food? Would you like something? Mm. All right, going all in. Want some? Mm. <laughs> Yummy goodness on a spoon. Uh, first of all, thank you for bringing this here to Doha because when it comes to vegetarianism or veganism, there's not a huge scene for it here, um, at least not when we first got here. But then once we heard the restaurant was open, we're like, oh my gosh, finally some place that we can go to and like not feel restricted and in what, know we're, what eating. we're eating. <laughs> of course. I think, I think, as I said, I mean, it's like Evergreen has have started because of, you know, of something that I was really passionate about. I mean, me as a vegan um, and, and through my journey and how I discovered that and how I became vegan, I think have led me to, to create the space. And, um, and, and if, you, if you see around Evergreen, like the space is inspired by, by so many places from all over the world because yes, you, I became vegan because of the knowledge and the, and, the, and the information that I've got. But of course, when you travel around the world and then there's a lot of other stuff and elements that inspires you to continue on this lifestyle and to be more committed and believe in it. And especially nature, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, nature, the elements of like, um, uh, uh, um, you know, let's say wood, uh, raw, you know, like, um, um, uh, I would say, I don't know, like uh, things that are like very touchable, you know, like something that you can really sense and feel. I think that's what you see here, the textures. Um, the textures you see is always something from Morocco, something from Bali, and something literally from Egypt, or, you know, like it's just like, it's about the whole journey. Um, Even this wall behind you is like you run the outside inside. Exactly. I mean, I 
I really love plants and I think plants have been a big um, inspiration for me to continue this lifestyle. Um, the restaurant I, has been doing awesome, yeah. which we're happy about mm. because that means we have some place that we know we can come and eat. Mm -hmm. But what do you see happening next with Evergreen? Or is there something else you want to bring yes. to Qatar? So, I mean, Evergreen has been the, the foundation, I would say, for all my other businesses. From that, I built up on four other vegan businesses that are um, um, uh, from different sectors. You know, I've opened a vegan cafe in Cambodia, um, the first vegan cafe in Cambodia. I've opened two branches. I've opened uh, my first skincare and uh, ethical uh, vegan products line uh, called Botany. I've opened uh, my uh, a foundation uh, in Cambodia called the Goodbye Foundation, where it aims to feed children in Cambodia healthy vegan food, uh, not just food, vegan food. Um, I've uh, just launched my factory, which does a lot of, which produces packaging for recycled and, 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 and uh, reclaimed, uh, uh, makes recycled packaging for restaurants and stores and shops. Uh, so I'm trying to kind of make the full picture uh, from wherever I can and whatever resources that I have and, and of course opportunities. And there's something that's maybe I would say either bad or wrong, I'm not sure if it's bad or, wrong, or, or something. I mean, um, it is amazing, but I don't say no to opportunities. Mm -hmm. I always say yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I put my, myself a lot of stuff, but I know that I can do it. Um, so these are the things that I'm doing on, on, on the side of Evergreen. For Evergreen itself, Evergreen has been, has boomed since day one. Like since, yes, since the is. day we, we opened from day one, we was packed, like the first hour, it was packed. The second day, packed. Third day, packed. And it was like, oh my God. At that point, I remember like sitting, we we're always waiting here as a team. Uh, a few minutes before we opened the door, and we we're like, I was telling them, guys, if nobody showed up, that's fine. You know, that's okay. We're vegan. We're organic. We're healthy. We're different. We're in the middle of nowhere. I'm sure something like it could happen, and but then it just it did not happen. <laughs> so Evergreen have went into um, 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 from being, as I said, a small business to like something that's now like more solid. Um, that people can really be very they can trust. At the same time, from that we took it to, uh, uh, because people want Evergreen everywhere in Doha, people want to get Evergreen, want to put their hands on Evergreen products. So we, now we've decided to open up our centralized kitchen, which is going to be producing uh, uh, product, whole food products, to all the supermarkets in Qatar. Uh, so any super, all big supermarkets are gonna have are gonna stock evergreen products from cheeses to granolas to uh, uh, ferment, fermented stuff to um, um, uh, dry stuff to to superfoods. You know, big range like you're talking about like 20 to 30 products of uh, awesome. of, of homemade, made in Qatar, uh, vegan products that are fully organic uh, and, and, and and healthy. Thank you so much, uh, Chef Matt, for everything. My pleasure. Hope you enjoyed everything. The food was amazing. Thank you. And we really appreciate what you're trying to do for the earth itself. So the next time you're in Doha, be sure to come down to Evergreen Organics. And extra Chef Matt. Yes. And get some beet ravioli. <laughs>